The Wikimedia movement has the goal to provide a world where everyone can share in the sum of all knowledge. How good is Wikimedia doing at that? Well, let's try a simple question, like for example, which cities have female mayors? It is kind of hard to access this information traditionally, right? You have to go and look for the cities and then um, write this down. And this is where Wikidata enters in. Wikidata is an open knowledge graph. It's powering Wikipedia and many other projects launched a few years ago and provides structured linked data with resolvable persistent identifiers and it's all multilingual and all of it is available in the CC0 license so you can use it for anything you want. Um, I'm getting a weird echo up here. Do you hear me well? Perfect, okay, then I just ignore that. <laughs> Um, how does Wikidata look like? So this is a page on Wikidata. They're not particularly pretty, but we also don't expect too many people actually coming directly to our page and reading it. So this is a, uh, the page about San Francisco. It has several pieces on it. For example, it links to all the different articles in the different languages to San Francisco. So it connects all of them together. It has this terminological box where we know, okay, this item here is called San Francisco in English. It's written in Russian like this and in different languages. We have short descriptions for that, um, aliases, so we can find it easily. And one important thing is this little Q identifier. This is the actual name of the entity that represented here in Wikidata. And this is also used to what we have for creating our triples, for creating our actual graph in it. The advantage of using those Q identifiers instead of just names because names are ambiguous and uh, could mean many different things. There's not only a single San Francisco in the world. Is that we can actually take this page and just switch to another language, like for example German or Chinese or, um, or Hebrew. And it's always the same content. And you can not only read it in those different languages, you can actually edit it directly in Hebrew and as soon as you go over to the Chinese side, it's again, it's immediately up to date because the content is what is being presented. It's not the text information like in Wikipedia. So all the information is always up to date no matter in what language people are editing the content in Wikidata. The heart of Wikidata are really the statements at the bottom. Let's take a closer look at some of those. So, a statement is, in its core, a triple. We have here two statements, and in its core we have those claims. So statements consist of claims and references. The claims are basically triple-based. So here, for example, so the subject is always the topic of the page. In this case, San Francisco, we say that head of government is London Breed. So this is the actual triple, and then we have qualifiers on those. This is similar to what Mark was presenting earlier with the permanent IDs that you have actually identifiers on those and, and connect more information with them. The next thing is that we have those references for every single claim. So a statement consists of claims, of, of claims and references, and the references are super important because Wikidata is not about the truth. That's the, that's important. It's just like Wikipedia, it doesn't represent the truth. It presents what the sources outside are saying about the different items. So um, we don't try to figure out what is the capital of Israel for reals. We don't try to figure out to, to whom does the Crimea belong for real. It's all about what do actually sources say about this and which sources to say. And you can then use the knowledge, filter by it, and, um, and, and decide for yourself which, uh, which sources you actually want to trust. So this data model is um, what is then available in the knowledge base. And inside of Wikipedia, for example, this knowledge is used in several different places. So we have the info box on the right where we can access the information from Wikidata and display it so to keep, for example, the, the mayor, the population, and so on up to date. We have the links on the left-hand side of the Wikipedia article, which allows you to access the article in different languages. And then at the bottom, we have the authority control saying, this page about San Francisco, so this is about the topic of San Francisco, and San Francisco is named 4051520-5 in GND. So this is then, you have the different keys in different authority databases all around the world. In fact, 
Wikidata links to more than 4,000 authority databases all around the world, and more and more of those databases are linking back to Wikidata, creating, it the, creating e the easily largest interconnected authority database out there. So we have the uh, Library of Congress linking back to Wikidata, the German National Bibliothek, Europeana is linking to Wikidata, also museums like the Museum of Modern Art here in New York, and many more are linking to Wikidata and we are linking to them, so that you can actually go and access much more knowledge out there on the graph. Wikidata is not your destination for all kind of knowledge. It's actually a place where we want to link like a digital Rosetta Stone from the different um, databases. What are the identifiers that they use for the same topic? So you can look it up in different databases and connect the information that you want from the authorities you trust. This makes Wikidata a central place that connects in, into a huge web of data where you, can connect, where you can collect a lot of data from all over the place, which is much, much bigger than Wikidata would ever provide. So, um, and this connects, for example, on the web with schema.org where we have um, more than 12 million publishers publishing data in uh, schema.org and actually consist and more than 30% of the web has structured data in them that can be connected and reused. One project you might uh, want to look into is datacommons.org, which provides this kind of information, which provides access in a cloud-based fashion to access this information and connect to it and recon to it and, um, and use it. So Wikidata itself has by now more than 50 million items about all kinds of topics. What we see here, this map is actually just generated out of the geo coordinates in Wikidata. Um, there are more than 700 million statements connecting those items inside of Wikidata, building the, the knowledge graph that you can use in your applications. And the data is available in 400 languages. Uh, they are, this number is I'm um, most proud of. There are more than 20,000 active contributors uh, working on Wikidata. This number is actually larger than, for, larger than for any Wikipedia besides the English Wikipedia, so it's larger than the German or the French Wikipedia, and it um, the, makes it the second or third largest wiki project in the world, tied together with Wikimedia Commons, and just only behind the English Wikipedia. There have been more than 900 million edits to Wikidata, in the last five years, actually half of the edits happening to the Wikimedia projects were going to Wikidata. So it um, compared to all the Wikip other Wikimedia projects together. And this number surprised me a lot. There are more than 8 million Sparkle uh, queries daily. When we started Wikidata, with f Sparkle was very much a niche language. And uh, a lot of people would argue it still is a niche language. And we thought, should we really put up a Sparkle endpoint? And should, what's, is it really worth it to map everything to RDF, to have this there in this, and expose it in Sparkle? And it turns out, yes, it's, um, having a standard language helped enormously with people learning Sparkle, because there were already so many resources out there. There were books, there were websites, there, they could just go there. And now we have a very uh, livid community that helps each other with how to formulate Sparkle queries, that um, how to actually ask uh, stuff from Wikidata. And the Sparkle endpoint is uh, beautiful on Wikidata. If you haven't tried it out, you should really go. It has um, auto-completion, it has form-based fill-outs, all kind of stuff you can do with your queries. And the output, you don't just get it back in XML or JSON or something like this so for, uh, for the machine, but you can actually use the output and, create and generate visualizations right out of the Sparkle endpoint. And those visualizations, you can either um, link to directly, or you can embed them into your own website. So, so you can create Sparkle queries, for example, like show me, the, show me a gallery of pictures of Picasso. And you get the gallery right there out of the box, out of the Sparkle endpoint, and can embed it or reuse it then. Or for example, show me an interactive timeline of space probe stars, which you can zoom in, which you can scroll, which you can um, click in and learn more about it. All directly, just by making a single Sparkle query. Um, a bubble chart of the, of the causes of death of all the people inside of Wikidata where we know the cause of death. Um, or um, you can also use federated querying. So this is a map of ATMs in Munich that have an affiliation to Interbank. 
the information which banks have an affiliation with Interbank comes from Wikidata. But then it goes out to local knowledge bases about the actual ATMs, because we don't have every single ATM in Wikidata. But there are other linked data sources out there, Sparkle endpoints that, are, uh, that have this information. And Wikidata Sparkle endpoint can federate these queries to those, connect it with the information from Wikidata, and then visualize the results on a map. This way, you can access much, much more knowledge than what is just in Wikidata. You can connect it with your own databases. You can um, federate all these things out and get them all together in a single place. Or you can ask for the cities of a female mayor. And therefore, we're getting a little bit closer to this goal of actually allowing everyone to share in the sum of all knowledge by asking those queries. And we enable everyone to ask this kind of queries to explore this information and so on in a multilingual way. So you can go ahead and do all of these things in, the, in your own native language. So are we there yet? Um, all we have to do is get everything from Wikipedia into Wikidata, and the knowledge would be available to everyone, right? Well, there's a little problem with that. Um, the stuff in Wikipedia is obviously much more expressive than what we can actually represent in a knowledge graph, or what we can easily represent in a knowledge graph. Um, natural language is so much stronger, and it allows us to express so many more things that um, a knowledge graph can't easily express. So how can we get a little bit closer to a world where we can actually turn more of the knowledge from Wikipedia into Wikidata? And here is where we go a little bit beyond of what knowledge graphs do. So this is a sentence from the San Francisco article. Upon death or resignation of the mayor, the president of the board of supervisors becomes acting mayor until the full board elects an interim replacement for the remainder of the term or until a special election. Putting that into triples? <laughs> okay. Let's take another, a sim I'm going to take a simpler sentence. San Francisco is the fourth largest city in California after Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Jose. Again, putting this into triples, sounds it should be easy, right? But the thing is, if we put this into triples, we usually actually wouldn't put this explicitly into triples. We would say the population of Los Angeles is this, the population of San Diego is that, San Francisco is this population. And assuming that you have um, complete knowledge about the populations of the large cities in California, you can ask the system, so what's the fourth largest system? It will easily answer that. But this exact sentence, is nowhere explicitly represented in your knowledge base. But those sentences are explicitly available in the Wikipedias all the time. If you actually read the Wikipedia articles, and this is true for most of human language uh, content, a lot of it is highly redundant. There's tons of, you, you read the sentences, the form a narrative, but, all, but almost all of what you read is extremely redundant. You don't read just facts and then you build up the stuff in your head. You actually read some narration which is highly redundant to the facts, which is based on the facts. And this somehow makes sense to us as humans. Can we capture that in a way that allows actually for humans to be represented? Can we capture this kind of explicit, redundant information, which knowledge graphs are not very uh, good for? So taking this example of this sentence, for example, if we can put it into a knowledge graph, obviously we can, because knowledge graphs can represent everything. So it's possible to do that. So, all we do is something like San Francisco is a population, and now let's take a, it's California, it's a city, and now let's take a blank node which represents a ranking. The ranking is four. We're talking about the city in California, and we're talking about the population, which is this, uh, this node over there. Um, so, so it's possible to kind of do that. But even if we have those triples, and by the way, we only did half of the sentence, but if we, even if we have those triples, Generating the actual natural language out of that is not easy. It, it's easy to generate it, but knowing that this is the sentence you're actually interested in at this point in time, this might be hard. How do we put this knowledge anywhere? The proposal that I'm making here is to create a novel um, knowledge base where we, can, where we have the community create constructors, frame-based things that can capture basically the information that we have here in an explicit way where they can then create the content for those uh, constructors and have renderers per language and tell you how to actually turn those constructors into natural language and then turn the 
Wikipedia um, content into this kind of formal way so that it is actually becoming available in many more languages. So, uh, so with such a system, we can then turn this kind of content into a sentence like the given one, but not only in English. It would be available immediately also in other languages on the same level of redundancy, on the same, following the same kind of narrative structure that is usually lost when we turn knowledge into a knowledge graph and capturing those. And with this infrastructure where we have then the constructors, the content being created, those renderers, we get, to a, we get to a different system than we currently look at with Wikidata. The, the goal is then to um, have this kind of abstract Wikipedia, which gives access to much more knowledge um, in, um, to much more knowledge than previously. Now this is obviously hard and speculative. This is even possible. Um, there are a few reasons for optimism of the whole thing. First, we're only talking about encyclopedic text. We're not talking about novels. We're not talking about lyrics. We don't have to represent the text exactly 100%. We just have to capture the, the, the knowledge and, and, and represent this. Also, unlike a lot of NLP research, we don't actually have to understand language because we can edit the content directly. We can edit the content in a structured way and allow this to be represented. And we can start very simple. The baseline is so low in many of those languages. Um, there are 300 language editions of Wikipedia, and more than half of them have only 10 active, uh, have 10 active contributors or fewer. And those people can't really build a comprehensive, up-to-date um, encyclopedia in their language. The whole thing has a very promising incentive infrastructure because we suddenly can believe that now 10 people can actually create an encyclopedia in their language because the content is being maintained in a central place for all the languages at the same time. So now you can go ahead and create an encyclopedia in Georgian, in, um, in um, Vietnamese, and others which are much more comprehensive than the current one. And the goal is super attractive. Working on this means that you're basically uh, building another important stone towards a world where everyone can share in the sum of all human knowledge. Thank you for your attention. Hi, I'm just curious if, uh, Wiki, uh, if Wikidata can support common sense inference. Like, for example, can, it, can I use it to answer the question, can, f can cows fly? Something that my three-year-old granddaughter answered instantly. <laughs> yes. So Wikidata does not support any inferencing directly because it's just a knowledge base. It just contains the actual factual ground facts. You can, on top of that, do any kind of reasoning. For example, if you have a reasoner that knows that mammals usually don't fly unless they are a certain kind of mammals, like bats, um, you could actually deduce that because you would know that cows are mammals. So that piece of data would be there. But the actual common sense reasoning is not part of the wiki database. So the reasoning itself, whether, it's not a, it's a, whether it is a common sense or whether it's formal reasoning, you have to provide yourself outside of Wikidata. Hi, Danny. Uh, you talked about constructors to connect Wikidata with Wikipedia. So yeah. isn't that very domain-specific, like what kind of data it is? So we need to have domain people for each of the Wikipedia domain. Yes. So how extensive is that work, just defining the constructor and then connecting them? Yes, um, I don't know. And that's exactly the right question to ask him to figure out how reasonable the whole thing is. Um, my current assumption is that we're probably getting away with something in the order of 10 or hundreds of thousands of constructors, which would be a reasonable number for the community to achieve, actually. So this, this would be, I think, okay if it's in the tens of thousands. It would be...